everyone it's Jess from Stellar Tarot and welcome back to my channel today we are doing a fan favorite a creator favorite a everybody favorite and we are going to talk about my favorites for the month of March this week I have quite the stack of things that I want to talk about so I'm going to try not to linger on everything for too long but just kind of talk about it a little bit and explain why it was a favorite. First and foremost though, we have this adorable new kitty cat mug which I got. It's got little paw prints on the inside. And this is a big favorite this month. Mm. The mug is so cute. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna get into stuff that I used up over the course of March. Um, I've been doing this to kind of sort of keep track of some things that I've been trying to pare down uh, within my home and my collection as a result of trying to either transition away from something or to just like I realized I had too much and I'm trying to, to declutter some of them naturally. So incenses, I've had a lot of them and I kind of went a little bit crazy. And <laughs> If you saw Sunday's video, you know that I now have a huge box of the Call of the Shaman incense, but I did explain why that was, because I tried to buy it in a smaller quantity and was unable to. So I have a large variety, or a large quantity of that now, but not a large variety of incense. Um, so I finished up the Egyptian Musk by the Flute brand, not as good as my Flore Egyptian Musk, so I will not be repurchasing this. And then also from the Satya brand, which, um, Theirs is my favorite brand of Nag Champa. This was sandalwood incense, and yeah, just not quite as good as the Nag Champa. I do like warm scents like sandalwood, uh, but I also found out within the last year or so, well after I had purchased this box, that sandalwood is an endangered species of wood, and it is not often ethically harvested for the use of making um, incenses with, so I will not be repurchasing uh, sandalwood incense unless I can verify that it has been ethically sourced so that is that um, I've also been trying to use up my Scentsy and other brands of wax warming bars uh, and then converting entirely over after that to essential oil diffusing so I finished up the sweet amber and freesia and I also finished up the Cambridge scent these are both from Scentsy themselves um, Cambridge is very like a masculine warm kind of like almost cologne scent it was really nice um, and so I'm going to endeavor to find like a recipe online for like an oil mixture that I could make that may, might be similar. Um, Sweet Amber and Freesia was very floral and actually this one was very intense. Yeah, uh, I had to be very careful when I warmed this one to do so only when I could have windows open for the first couple of hours that it was warming because otherwise it just overpowered the whole house. And I mean like I have two warmers up here, one in the bathroom which sort of serves as like a nightlight purpose as well. Uh, and then the other one is in the kitchen but it also serves to like scent the living room and the hallway as well. And so I had to be really careful to only like to turn off the one in the bathroom so there was no scent from that and then to only use this one and the one in the kitchen and to have like the sliding door open, the kitchen door open, and even like the living room window would be a crack open to kind of get some fresh air and waft out that really potent first couple of hours of this. It like and you shouldn't have to do that for something that's supposed to be a pleasant experience. But I didn't want to chuck it and just waste it. 
so I did use it but I made sure I only used it on days when it was really warm and beautiful outside and I could have the windows open to sort of like diffuse that scent around a little bit um, the nice thing was though is once you got over that really big overpowering part of this being fragranced uh, it didn't have a ton of stain power it did sort of dissipate within the first couple of days so that was good uh, and all of those will be recycled um, I'm also going to talk about a tea that I used up and that was the um, sang on chai from David's tea now I've talked before about how it's probably like my favorite chai tea ever However, the David's Tea location that was in my city closed down last year due to the pandemic. There's only a few locations left in BC, like in brick and mortar stores. Everything else, David's Tea, that I would have to get, I would have to order online. And my last order from them, I did a little while after uh, Halloween last year. I probably will not continue to purchase from David's Tea like that because the thing is, is like, that just seems a unnecessary um especially like to have to pay like they they offer free shipping but it's on like an exorbitant amount excuse me while i peel off a tag off the bottom of my um tin here so i i won't be repurchasing from david's tea online unless there's like a really 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 good reason for me to do so um you know, like if my mom says she's going to place an order, do I want a couple, do I want to throw a couple of bags in there? You know, I might do something like that, but I'm, I'm not going to be repurchasing from them myself. However, there are two really great options for me um, with teas that are local. So I'm trying to eventually get rid of the majority of my individually bagged teas and switch mostly over to loose leaf with a couple of exceptions. Um, and there is a really great a tea place literally minutes from my house and it's attached to the same building as one of my favorite garden nurseries so I went there about a week and a half ago and I purchased their chai indian and this is a pretty standard chai with uh, quite a good spice level and impact to it, but it's not overly spicy and empower like an, an overpowering. It pairs beautifully with a little bit of honey or sugar in there to sweeten it and a bit of milk to make almost sort of like a latte. It is lovely. And they do offer a discount to you when you bring in your reusable containers, which I will be doing in the future. So that's great. Also, for things like just normal black teas, my local eco store does black tea by weight as well, and a couple of other ones. They have a wonderful mint tea that I purchased from them about a month ago. And yeah, so I can get uh, loose leaf teas from them, and then after I use up the majority of my bag teas, I've got a wonderful French press that I'm going to start to use to make larger quantities of the steeped teas like that so that I can... Um, cut down on the amount of waste that I am making. So, um, yeah, this is a really lovely new favorite of mine, this beautiful chai, and um, I recommend trying to find uh, loose leaf bulk ways of purchasing your teas like that in the future if that is something that you want to do. And then just because we're already on the subject of teas, um, I decided to purchase some mugwort on the recommendation of Miss Lovely Joey from Starry Eyed Supplies. I was discussing with her that I have a very difficult time with dream recall. Even if I put certain crystals under my pillow or try to do like spells or things like that to try to remember, even just like to have the intention when I go to bed that I'll remember my dreams, it's very difficult for me to do so because I am such a deep sleeper. Once I am asleep, unless my kids are crying or something crashes through the house and makes an immense amount of noise, I don't wake up. I just don't. So, um, I purchased mugwort to use as a tisane and to help me with my dream recall, which has actually worked beautifully. However, it is so bitter and I could not stomach the, the taste of it all on its own. So I decided to pair it with some nighty night tea from uh, Traditional Medicinals, and actually I found that this works really well. The nice thing about Traditional Medicinals is that 
all of their packaging is completely recyclable. There's not wrapped in plastic, it's wrapped in paper. The cardboard box is recyclable and obviously so is the string, the paper tag on it, and then the bag and the tea itself. So I don't feel bad about having these in conjunction. I wish that my local um, shop carried it in like paper bags instead of plastic. Um, but I might be able to start buying it in bulk from uh, not the not the health food store that I got this in from, but possibly from another local store that I will be able to package in paper to cut down on my use of plastic. So this has been a really good combination. If you also would like to be better at dream recall, be able to write it down, um, are trying to learn how to manage that, but would also not like to just drink straight mugwort because damn, it's bitter. Um, I did one, it's just a David's tea, like perfect spoonful. Uh, I did one spoon of that in with uh, the bag of this and it worked wonderfully. So um, I do have like a metal tea strainers that I use as well if I just need to make like a cup of tea with with some stuff loose leaf stuff in it so this worked really well for that so that's a recommendation of mine I am finding it helpful it's not foolproof uh there are times when I use the mugwort and I, I wake up the next morning just like normal and don't remember it but I find more often than not I am remembering so yeah I'm really really happy with that um let's talk decks uh, four decks in particular have been really prominently used by me this month. And the first one I want to talk to you about is a, still a fairly new deck to my collection, and that is the Hedgewitch Botanical Oracle by Ciolo Thompson. It's a small deck. It's not a, a very large oracle, um, but it is packaged beautifully in the Llewellyn package with the hardcover box, the book, and then the ribbon to pull the, the deck out. Um, as you can see, it's a relatively small deck, but it still packs a punch. Uh, she does these beautiful illustrations with the name of the plant in English, then its Latin name, its scientific name, and then the keyword at the bottom. I love this sort of like deliberate use of color. It's all white except for the outlines and then each card has a very deliberate placement of color while leaving some of it still um, completely white. It's, it's really beautiful. I really love this deck and I think it pairs wonderfully with just about any natural or green witch type of deck. I've used this with uh, the Oak Ash and Thorn Tarot. I have used this with the Wildwood Tarot. I have used this with the Fauna Tarot, the Green Witch Tarot, and um, the uh, Forest of Enchantment Tarot. And I think it pairs beautifully with any and all of them. Because it has a very deliberate use of color in it, uh, it's very white, so I feel like it can really match up with a lot of other decks visually and still be very visually appealing. But it also seems to just like really read well off of any other um, natural themed tarot decks. And speaking of natural themed tarot decks, two of them in my collection have been especially prominent uh, in their use this month, and that is the Tarot Fauna and the Oak Ash and Thorn Tarot. I feel like these two decks are very similar in a lot of ways. Um, they're both very much based on the woods and natural energies and uh, animals and plants, uh, whereas the Tarot Fauna depicts things with I would say a slightly more cartoonish style and definitely, as you can tell from just the box, a more vibrant color palette. Whereas the Oak Ash and Thorn Tarot is a little bit more um, realistic in its depiction of a lot of the different animals and stuff. And um, the, the color palette is more, I would say, subdued and even keeping in with like a more natural almost looking as if, like, I don't know if this was the creator's process or not, but it almost looks like a lot of the artwork and the paintings were done with, like, natural pigments and, and tones that actually come from the earth. So I don't know if this is part of um, uh, her process or not, 
but um, it is a really beautiful deck and again very natural very and also like because of the amount of white that is on this deck uh, it pairs I think really beautiful with the Hedgewitch Botanical for that reason um, but I think it pairs really beautifully with the tarot fauna because it is so vibrant and, and bright that that hint of white added in with that extra card here and there is not only really visually appealing, but it sort of like picks out some of those colors. So yeah, it, it just, it pairs beautifully for with a variety of decks. If you've been thinking about adding the Hedgewitch, Hedgewitch Botanical to your collection, I think it's great. Absolutely great. Um, and then the last deck I've been using a lot is the Muse Tarot. I've had this for a couple of months now. I picked it up on a whim when um, my uh, husband and kids and I were all stuck in the house for like a month solid uh, when he got COVID back in January, which by the way, that reminds me, someone had asked in a comment a little while ago how he was doing and to update you guys on that. And I feel like I should probably do that really quickly and I'll do that after I talk about this deck. So um, also sort of vibrant, although more pastel vibrant colors than like full on intense, uh, like primary type colors. It definitely is more pastel, but it is still quite vibrant. It is still quite um, saturated in its color tones. And it's a really beautiful deck. Uh, it is collage style, which is not usually my cup of tea at all. But in this case, it's really just been put together in a really beautiful way. It's a very creative, creatrix energy sort of deck. And I have really been loving it. Uh, it's such a departure from so much of what I tend to look for in a deck. And yet, somehow, it still manages to be an amazing deck. I will say it does take a little bit of time to get used to the different names of some of the cards and the suits at first. It can it can make even an experienced tarot reader stutter and and pause a little bit here and there, but I think it's something that's very easy to overcome with a bit of practice and work with the deck. It's something I was able to start reading with for clients within just a couple weeks of owning it. It didn't take very much to, to overcome that at all. And now I have an eyelash in my eye and it's driving me crazy. There we go. Mm. So update for those of you who are not aware. Um, obviously, since I haven't been talking ad nauseum about uh, COVID and all of that stuff within my family, he recovered very well. Uh, Neil was able to return to work on January 29th, which was the first day that he was predicted to be able to, to go back to work. And um, he has had no lasting effects from the virus whatsoever. Once he got over the initial symptoms, which thankfully were very mild because he, has a, he had a very mild case, once he got over those initial symptoms, he did have a lingering fatigue for a few days, but even by the time he was able to return to work on the 29th and his positive test came back on the 20th, they think that he was, we think that he was ill from like about the 18th until I think he was feeling pretty much back to himself on like the 22nd or the 23rd. Um, he had a bit of lingering fatigue for a few days after the actual um, like uh, symptoms were gone. Uh, but by the time he went back to work on the 29th, he didn't feel like he needed naps in the day anymore or anything like that. He's had no issues or health issues since then. We've all, except for that cold that Emily got the first day back at school once we were allowed to uh, finish isolating. Um, on the 12th of February, she went back to school and then came back with a cold, which manifested itself full on the weekend um, after she went to school and then I caught it and had to stay home for a week except for that little bit of um, of illness within the family and Andrew felt a little bit under the weather with the same cold for like two days so he he missed a couple days of school and then he went back 
Um, except for that, we've all been healthy as horses. And as I am recording this video today, I actually um, have my COVID vaccine, my first one booked for tomorrow morning, and I am so excited to be able to go get my first vaccine. Uh, I am allowed to in phase two in BC, which is what we're in here, because I am a health worker and I was not able to be vaccinated in phase one. So I am super excited. I have never been more excited to go get a shot in my entire life. I am by no means um, excited normally about getting needles or being around them, uh, but I'm not afraid of them anymore either. I've had enough flu shots and other vaccines over the years to protect me through my uh, work because I am in contact with the public a lot and obviously in contact with people with all sorts of varieties of um, illnesses and things like that, that I've had extra vaccines like Twinrix, which is for Hep A and Hep B. I've had vaccines for whooping cough. I've had vaccines for flus on particularly bad years and things like that for a number of years now. So um, yeah, I am very excited for this one because it will hopefully allow our family a little bit sooner to sort of return back to normal. And I just feel good that I'm doing my part to protect my community and especially my patients because some of my patients don't feel comfortable getting the vaccine because they already are quite immunocompromised and they're worried about dealing with um, some of the side effects of the vaccine afterwards and feeling even worse than they already do with some of those conditions. So for me to have the vaccine means that it's safer for me to, to interact with them, to deliver to them, other things like that. And I it just, they feel better knowing that I am coming to them, delivering stuff to them, and I am safe to do that. So I, am, I feel very, uh, I, I feel like it's a service that I'm doing for my community and especially for my specific patients. So yeah, getting my vaccine done and I'm very excited about it. If I can, I'm going to put it up on my Instagram, on my Facebook stories, um, the process of it. I, by the time this video goes up, you might've already seen it. So yeah, very excited. Let's talk crystals and other things. So three crystals in particular have really called to me as of late and they're all very natural colored this is i believe an agate or a um a jasper of some kind i'm not even sure what i don't remember where i got this from this could even just be a rock i really don't know i want to say it looks like it is an agate or a jasper though it does have that sort of um, vibe to it. It's very smooth, it has been polished. Um, if you know what it is, please feel free to sound off in the comments. Um, it just feels very earthy and very grounding and very connected to like that element, like, like that archetype of the Earth Mother. Same with this one, uh, Tiger's Eye. Very Earth Mother connection for me. And I also uh, was ha had this one under my pillow when I was on my period, especially because I do find that it sort of helps to mellow out some more of the more um, more extreme emotional reactions that I can tend to have when I'm menstruating. Just because my menstrual cycle tends to be a lot more severe than a lot of other women's, it's very heavy, uh, often uncomfortable or even just downright painful. And... Um, I just, I feel kind of miserable physically as well as mentally at times when I'm on my period. I tend to get even more um, introverted and introspective and reclusive when I'm on my cycle. And I feel like I need something to help balance me out and remind me that this is a phase and that this too shall pass. And Tiger's Eye seems to have that really calming, grounding, and reassuring effect on me, reminding me that this is more of a time to go inward, that it's okay to retreat a little bit, that I don't have to be my full outward positive bubbly self for everybody all the time, that this is my time to rest and go within. Tiger's Eye seems to really make that obvious and apparent for me and to remind me of it. Uh, and then I have Tree Agate here. Um, this just feels very springy right now. It's white with the green specks, so it feels almost like um, looking up into a sky, like a, a 
partly clouded over sky with little like fresh green shoots growing out of tree branches or something. That's sort of what this energy just reminds me of right now. And it just felt really right and really natural for this time. I am going to go ahead and put these back in my little crystal case for now and I'm going to pick out some new ones to put under my pillow starting tonight and I'm very happy about that. Um, they have felt really relevant but some of them now feel like it's time for me to sort of move on to another set. Uh, another crystal type thing has been my prayer beads for Carnunos. Now, this is my personal set, uh, but I do have some similar sets available in the shop if you are interested. And they can really be used to connect with Carnunos himself. Green man type energy. I do have this really cool green man uh, charm face on this one, as well as... Um, an Yggdrasil or, or a Tree of Life uh, sort of um, a charm on this end. And then I have this antler on here um, to sort of connect kind of like with a variety of all of those like uh, green earth men type of uh, um, archetypes and deities and energies. So it could serve to remind you of the wild hunt. It could be a horned god generic thing. It could be John Barleycorn or whatever sort of like a archetypal figure. It could just be a um, like a holly king and oak king kind of thing. And so yeah, this one has uh, some jasper. Uh, it has this is oh. Is this green? Jasper? I don't even remember. I made this one so long ago, I don't even remember what crystal this is. This is some sort of green crystal. It might be like an agate or a jasper or even, um, it's definitely not jade. It's too deep to be a venturine. I, I'd hazard a guess to say that this is probably a, a jasper of some kind. Um, and then I have tiger's eye here as well. And then I also have a white uh, jasper on this end. And then, yeah, I think this is Jasper, and then a green Jasper on this end, and then this is like a uh, like a fancy picture brown Jasper. It's very beautiful, and I have these little um, Triskel, tris triskel, triskel, is that how you say it? Uh, beads in between here as well. That's something I include in a lot of my um, prayer beads as well, are those. So this has been a strand I've been using a lot. Sometimes I will hold them in my hands while meditating and go through it each strand at a time. And other times I'll even do things like hanging it around my neck like this while I'm meditating and then hold either having my hands empty and just like receiving energy or face down on the ground, a sort of ground excess energy or connect with earth energy, or sometimes I'll even hold other objects in my hands like uh, shaman stones or other things like that to um, help me connect with more energies and facilitate that uh, really deeper meditative response that I am looking for. And so yeah, it's, it's something that at the beginning of your meditation, they're cold, they're very apparent on your skin. It's some, a feeling that you can really root into and attach to and use it as a focal point to help you get into meditative space. But once they warm up to your skin, it's, it's almost like they're not there. And it, it doesn't serve as a distraction anymore. So that's another way that I really like to, to do that. Sometimes too, I just hold it as a collection in my hand, especially if I'm really feeling the need to, to have them with me. I might put them into their pouch bring them with me to work uh, and then hold them while I'm on my lunch break or something and just like take a few moments to breathe and ground back into myself. All right, a really random thing I've really been liking are these new headphones that I have from Skull Candy. These are the Sesh Evo uh, Bluetooth headphones and they fit into your ear like this and then the little button is uh, outward. Do I have? The, I have the wrong side in. <laughs> there we go. So it the button faces out that way, and um, this particular type, uh, you can either use one at a time, or you can use them as a pair. I don't believe it has a microphone attachment. I I could be wrong. Like I I don't think it has a microphone capability. 
I don't use Bluetooth headphones or, or headphones in general for like talking on my phone. I very rarely ever make phone calls like that. And when I do, I just hold it to my face. Um, but uh, right now in Canada, uh, the Tim Hortons, which is a big uh, coffee, donut, sandwich, soup kind of place that you can go to, uh, they have a yearly promotion on called Roll Up the Rim. So for years, you'd actually roll up the rim of your cup after you finished drinking it, and it would either tell you that you had please play again or tell you that you won something. You could win things from free donuts, coffees, sandwiches, muffins, other beverages, uh, or you could win um, other things like uh, cars and electronics and other stuff like that. This year, they're playing it exclusively on the app for COVID reasons. And it's actually really cool because every roll is now a winner. It, even if you just get a few points that go towards your account so that you can use it to redeem for free beverages or food, or it also will give you, like I got, a $20 credit to Skull Candy's website. So that's what I ended up using my credit towards. I would never have purchased a set of Bluetooth headphones, like a quality pair beforehand. Um, and I, I only did because I was given the credit. And I, I had wanted a pair but felt very uh, unjustified in investing in a set. And because I had that credit, Neil was basically just like, yeah, use it. Get, get yourself a nice pair of headphones. Normally, what I do is I wait for my dad to get a new iPhone free through work, which he usually does every few years. And then he gives me the Apple headphones, which are my... I still say these are my favorites because they fit in my ears so nicely. I do have smaller ears, so I had to change out the little, um, these things for the smallest set. And even then, every now and then, I have to, like, screw them back into my ear to get, like, a good, um, like, a fit. These are still my favorite. However, wired headphones are not always practical and comfortable for what you might be using them for and so these are great when i'm at work i can pop my phone into my back pocket or even just leave it on a surface at my work if i'm working in my little room packaging for other people and stuff like that i am free to move around doing what i'm doing whether that be like putting medications into the into the trays or whether that be spooling them into cartridges to go out to clients or other things like that. Uh, having the Bluetooth headphones is more freeing. I'm not tied to have my phone on me. It does have a good radius of connection, so I can just leave my phone on the desk or on the machine or, or even in my purse to keep safekeeping. And I can walk around and still listen to my music because there is no music or radio in the little room that I am uh, using. So having uh, my phone and these to, to do music on is, it's a game changer. It really is. And I really enjoy having it. Uh, I would never pay Apple prices for AirPods. I would never pay full price for a set of um, Bluetooth headphones. And I did not want to get a really poor quality set that were cheap because I wanted to actually have a good set. So now that the technology has been out there and now that I actually had the credit to make it worth it, this was a great investment piece and I'm really happy with them. So, also the cool thing is this case, you can then plug your little um, cord into the back uh, and it has like a USB connector so you can charge them. Uh, you put the things back in here and it actually charges them in the case, which I think happens with the AirPods too, but I really wouldn't know. And then the other cool thing is these magnetically slip back into the case which is just so cool. And then it even like closes with like a little magnetic closure inside the case itself. And I, I, and then it like, it shows you with the little lights on the front, how much power is left in the case. And I, I freaking love it. I freaking love it. I never thought that I would be so excited about a set of freaking headphones, but here we are. And I don't know if you guys can hear the wind but we're having like a little miniature rain and wind storm outside. Makes me so glad to be inside and warm and cozy right now. Mm, I'm gonna go put a sweater on after this just to feel even more cozy. Okay, let's talk books. We have five books here. 
first I'm going to get the boring one out of the way. Uh, rewire your anxious brain. How to use the neuroscience of fear to end anxiety, panic, and worry by uh, Catherine Pittman, PhD, and Elizabeth M. Carl, MLIS. This book is um, sort of a self-help type book, but mostly is there to teach you literally the science behind how anxiety works and how you can sort of overcome yours, both on an emotional level as well as a physical level. I would not say that this book is going to heal you entirely of anxiety. However, I would say that it is a very good way to understand what your body and your brain are going through when you are experiencing whether a full-on panic attack or even just an anxious moment and how to slowly but surely gradually change that and how you physically and emotionally react when you're feeling anxiety. I would not call this a cure-all, but I would call this a really good um, tool in your toolkit. It is not a fun read by any stretch of the imagination. It is dry. It is scientific with a bit of that like conversational language that does allow you to sort of like understand where they're coming from and to get an idea of what you can do to combat anxiety. But it is not, um, it's, it's not a cure-all. But I do think that this is a really great tool for anyone who is suffering with anxiety is on or not on medication and would just like to learn how to better manage it. There are proven scientific strategies in here beyond things like cognitive behavioral therapy or dialectical behavioral therapy or other things like that. These are actually practical, easy things you can do in the midst of experiencing anxiety and it breaks it down into a way you can understand it. It is a good book. It's just not a fun book to read, but it serves a very practical and useful purpose. Next, I finally finished the other uh, Freya's, uh, um, oh, what was the first one called? I can't remember. Something about Freya by Rachel Sullivan. She sent me the first book and um, I loved it. And then immediately after having read uh, the first book, I went and purchased the other two books for myself. So Lilith's Children was the second and Ishtar's Legacy was the third. I will put links to the trilogy in the uh, description box so that if you are interested in supporting this small author, you can. They were amazing, wonderful books to read and I absolutely loved them. And I thought they were a great fantasy trilogy, very empowering for women, for sure. And just, yeah, like just really good. It's, it's, it had been a while since I had read a really good fiction book that really pulled me into a new world. And these absolutely did. And yet they're also modern day. So like you kind of get that nice sense of balance between fantasy and the world outside your door. I don't know why I'm doing all these lovely hand movements but they are. Enjoy, enjoy my graceful hand movements, if you will. <laughs> um, two other books that I actually mentioned in a very recent video on uh, beginner books for Druidry. So we have Wild Magic, which I'm just about finished reading by Danu Forrest. I am not going to go into depth on this book today because that is a video for another day. However, you should know that if you really love Celtic magic and you would like to kind of learn about things slightly different perspective in a new way and not your standard um, beginner Celtic magic book, this is a great one to pick up and I highly recommend it. Another one I've been reading that I talked about was uh, Entering the Forest by David Dom. This is part of the New Order of Druids um, junior bardic level uh, course book essentially and uh, I really really am liking this. It is written from the perspective of Taliesin the Bard and a lot of information about Druidry is told through story and through his narration in a way that definitely makes it easy to read for not just adults but even for like teenagers or older kids as well. 
if you are wanting to get your kids more into druidry and into your practice, you could literally read this out loud to them a chapter at a time and stop and discuss about things. You also have breaks in here for like stories about certain gods. So this is about the story of Lou. And, you know, you can talk about why it's important to celebrate uh, this, this god and what that means. Um, there are other cool things too, like how to do certain things. So there's lots of fun um, little uh, crafts in here. In, later on in this book, there's also how to make a Bridget's Cross, uh, drumming. Um, there's a little bit about Oum and other stuff like that. It, it is by no means a dumbed down condescending version of Druidry. This is a very well written resource and I, I just think it's a really great companion to any pagan parent who wants to introduce their kid into like more of a Celtic or Druidic style of practice and devotion and worship. I, I really think you could not do any wrong with that. Um, you have to order them from lulu.com. It's like a print-on-demand service. So um, yeah, you just have to go to lulu.com and then enter in the title and then you're able to find um, that book and then other books by the same author and that are for the, the New Order of Druids. So I highly recommend it. That, you guys, concludes my March favorites. There were some other things that I have enjoyed this month, of course, um, but these are the things that really stick out to me and that uh, really have uh, been fun to to utilize and to talk about stuff I really wanted to discuss with you guys. Um, I am going to see you guys all in the next video and until I do please continue to take care of yourselves take all the safety precautions that you can with COVID-19 still being out there still being a thing please remember that it is not over yet I wish it was but it's not and until we speak again be wise be brave and most of all be magical. Bye.